Good evening. I'd like to take and call the Monday, August 6th regular select board meeting for Brooktown and Berlin to order. Uh, to my far left is Kate Kelly, Wayne Lambert to my left, Jeremy Hansen to my right, Diane is uh, Diane, uh, Angelina Capron, and our town administrator Dana Hadley, and our town treasurer Diane Isabel. I'm Brad Town, and we will start with additions or changes to the agenda. Day. I have no changes or additions. Uh, public comment. Hearing none, we'll move to the treasurer's report. Uh, the preliminary audit is set up to, uh, is set for August 29th, and on that day, the auditor needs to speak to one of the select board members. It could be over the phone. She just asks basic questions: Are you suspecting any kind of fraud, or are, are you getting the reports you need? Are they timely? So I need one of you to volunteer, and then I can have her call you on August 29th, which is the last Wednesday of the month. Usually we've had her call the chairman, and I'm all you available. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I can just have her call yourself. Yep. Yeah. You have my number. Yeah. <laughs> I have cool. it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Four seven seven two yeah. three zero. And that's all I've got because the other item that I have is in the agenda. Okay. Uh, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Uh, upcoming tax sale. Okay. Yeah, if you want. Um, I think we've sent you the paperwork on Diane's got an upcoming tax sale. It is scheduled for August 9th. 9th. Um, there are, I believe, four properties. We're down to four now. We had um, six originally, and two of them have paid. One of them is a two, just a 2.1 acre property off of Cecile Avenue in Berlin. Uh, which is Highland Avenue at the top of Highland Avenue, Cecile. Um, one of them is a mobile home, which is out on 149 Three Mile Bridge Road. Um, that is a mobile home that is on someone else's land, whom we know. And one of them is another mobile home, which is down at Weston's on 69 Third Street. Um, and finally, there is a home on Muzzy Road. However, we didn't send you a picture of that one. There is a financial transaction in process on that on that one. So we think that we, one's going to resolve. We feel that that one yeah. will <laughs> um, reconcile itself. So as we've done in the in the recent past, um, we let you see what we have <laughs> and if you have any interest in the town on bidding on any of these. Um, We've included the amount that would be what we think as of now would be the minimum bid, which would change the day right. of the sale. Because There'll be more legal fees. And legal that. fees and interest. Um, and I don't really have any that I would recommend that you express any interest in. I think it would even remotely make sense would be the, would be the lot. But, so. Yeah, and I don't see what we would you right. know, kind of been there, done that. Right. You know, yeah. Right. So that's going to be on August 9th. Yeah. Um, what time, Diane? Is 10 a.m. at the town office. Yeah, we usually do it. We usually do it here. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And Rob Helpert, our attorney. Yeah. And of course, the attorney um, handles that. So we hope we have some interest in yeah. the tax sale. Because it costs a lot of money to set it up. Yes. Which we have no choice. We're set then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from uh, V Train from the Bridge Seven project. Uh, is Mahendra coming? Uh, I think he is. So. So can we do? Yeah, because um, he's got all your graphics. Okay. okay. So Why don't we what go to exactly the? We're doing, so. We'll skip to the next one. I don't see Mr. Back. Dodson either. <laughs> um, maybe we can do. Oh, Jim is next. Yep. And he's here. Uh, Jim Gwinnell, Airtown Thunder Chickens. Come on up, Jim. Yep. Okay. 
How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Just got back my first day back from vacation. Oh, so it's great to come back, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I take the sort of vacations my boss wants to think I come back and all rested and ready to go and ready to go. I come back thinking, like, well, how come I couldn't figure out some way to not have to come back? There you go. Spending a week and a half out of camp with, no. Jim is with the um, Berrytown Thunder Chickens. Uh, he, we discussed that he has a couple broods that he's working on. Um, and he's trying to get over to, I guess you're trying to get over to Irish Hill. Um, yeah. So, um, and they involve, I guess I need you to explain to the board what they involve as far as town roads. Um, as you know, uh, snowmobiles, unless you have an ordinance, are yeah, not unless allowed there's a town special road, and we zone. don't have an ordinance. Yep, currently, I guess not. Yeah. Now. That, um, well, first off, we certainly appreciate you guys taking the time to take a look at this. This, just as an example, this is an overview of what we're looking to do. Is to get connected up this red, reddish, was supposed to be red, but my parents are trying to have up, is the line, the, the GPS line where we've mapped it to connect out through there. The part we're talking about today is just to get from Applebee's under the bridge and up into some private property there and pick up Black Road and down around to the Irish Hill Trail which would be over here on the far left. The stuff that I had emailed the other day is a much more of a close-up of that that makes it easier to see. And I do, again, pull out my base camp on here if anyone you know, wanted to see anything any closer. I'm pretty sure I took a picture of that and sent that. This was the map that you had um, in your packet. You maybe didn't get it very clearly, but um, it shows. And what town roads were you going to have to impact, Jim? We were... I'm, I'm, to me, I call this Crosstown Road out here, if that's, I don't know if that's the right, right name yeah. for that. Yeah. From the, the sled traffic, we've got tentative permission from the landowners to break off from the trail before it gets to the road by Applebee's and loop around down across here and up the old road, and then over the culvert and under the bridge and up into the property up there. For as far as the ATVs go, we had tentatively thought that you would prefer to set up a place for, to, for them to get from the parking lot to cut through here somewhere and down this road to not to stay out of the main traffic but from what you had said I didn't know what that maybe that we were mistaken in that that would just soon not be going up and down the road over here I thought there'd be less traffic so that would be more and it would be more on the weekends and nights and stuff when there wasn't much usage right. there yeah. and then to get and they would follow the same track up through private property pick up the end the far end of Black Road where it dead ends there and down that and then up the edge to the Irish Hill thing and there's quite a bit of that. I just drove out there again to remind myself that, that there's enough width on the side of the road that normally what uh, what they do is either depending upon whether just when the, when the truck goes by and wings it down or a rumor goes by and flattens it allows you so you're not actually in the line of traffic you're really riding on top of a flattened snowbank along the edge of the road so that there's not not as much of the you know, sled traffic actually in the road. We would prefer to get up into the woods there. We had a tentative plan to go down below there, but the city of Montpelier, after much discussion, decided that they wouldn't allow for us to cross their property down there with the, with the sled traffic. It, this area right here is, is really ideal for it. We're pretty excited about the possibilities because you've got all of the services you could possibly want, access to the highway, parking, food, gas, all that sort of stuff and within minutes you're up there in the big woods it is amazing i don't know how often you guys get a chance to get up into those trails you, you could be in the middle of island pond or something i mean you go you walk just a few hundred feet and you're you're in the big woods out there there's a current part of the trail system down in northfield where we would tie into that with the sled traffic to get them access to there and headed towards waitsfield there are some problems out there with the big bridge which you've probably seen from the interstate over in Waterbury where they cross the river there's a suspension bridge well, it was one of the longest ones in North America at one time but with all the flooding we've had and the ice and stuff it keeps it's causing enough trouble but rumor has it that they're not going to reopen it so now if you're on the Waitsfield side of thing you really have no way out of the valley to get anywhere without going the you know you know as uh, my wife says around Robbins Byron around the back way it's you know now that suspension bridge you're talking about there, that's the one over by Fires in the Fires field? Yes. 
I don't know that it's going to close permanently, but rumor has it that they're not going to go back and try and fix it again. It, and it, you want to use these roads here to take and make the connector trail from Applebee's in the parking yeah. up into the trail system in Northfield. Right. It will connect into the vast trail system and also the Northfield ATV Club comes up to the, uh, the little pizza deli place at the end of where the interstate drops down yep. currently and they feel they can connect onto that which would allow you at that point to go from clear from Braintree all the way to Applebee's and back. It's, there is uh, there are existing trails there which we've already found and there's plenty of folks up there using them but we're as far as the clubs and the organizations go, unless we have permission from each and every landowner, we can't go do any work there or do anything. I mean, I mean, I can go there and ride if somebody will let me, but as far as the club coming in, doing any maintenance and fixing the bridges and doing all that sort of stuff, unless we've got written permission from everybody along the way, we, we can't send anybody in there to really do anything to, to help maintain the, the trails that people are already using. And is really the organizations are really a, a management tool to try to get keep things a little organized out there and do the maintenance on the trail but also get a clearly marked path so that cuts down a lot on the calls that you get from you know hey so when somebody's been riding an ATV down in my backyard or something like that if you've got a clearly marked trail and the club is there and usually the law enforcement is pretty good about working with us about you know checking on things we can kind of keep a keep a handle on it so your plan's a little different. It doesn't include Shed Road any longer. Is that what you? No, I only mentioned that not, it was really, we thought it would be your preference to have it for ATV traffic to come up and then kind of cut through here and get to it as opposed to going out the driveway and turning and going down. But I know in your email, you mentioned you had some concerns about that. So I didn't know if you would prefer to look at right. the other way. Yeah. We're you know open to that in any way that we can do that. We have merely picked what we thought would be the most desirable for that, particularly since most traffic, unfortunately, most of us that can afford to drive these things have to have a real job still, so we're not, we're not out around during the daytime. So when you say you would travel on top of the snowbank, and maybe, stop me if I'm not telling it right, but it, it's really in the right of way that we're talking about, town's right of way. Probably the best so, way to think. Yeah. You do sometimes, because of the lay of the land, you have to come on you know, and sure. back and forth. Because the, the sleds don't really want to be on the road any more than that, and I would like to think somewhere along the way we could find a path up through the woods off of Black Road, but there's a bunch of land, and part of the thing is Montpelier, as you, I'm sure you guys know more about this better than I do, owns land up parallel to the Irish Hill Trail. Yes. yes. And I didn't get the feeling from the email we had that they'd probably be willing to let us cross any of that either. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's, you know, that's their prerogative. I mean, that's the Irish Hill parking lot, I believe, is on their land. That there's, yeah. right, there's yeah. part of that there. And which is another thing there. Like, I, when I swung by there, there's a couple of cars there. The, the trail there, I, I, oddly enough, I mean, I grew up in Berlin. I knew there were trails there, but I didn't know that there was an actual official ATV trail up through there. I was surprised to see that sign when we first started looking. But if we, like if I, me and a guy that I usually ride with him and his wife and mine, if we pull in with our two trucks and trailers and things and park in there and get on there there as opposed to starting here, we're pretty much taking up most of it. Mm -hmm. There's not really a lot of room left for anybody else to come and the last thing we want to do is be interfering with things that people are already doing. <coughs> and you know, with the grooming going up over the hill, when you start running the machine up there, you know, you usually start seeing snowshoers and cross country people can really make, make use of the groomed trail. So really, your your big concern is just getting uh, use of some of the town roads, right? Currently, now I don't know I, the little bits I've heard that for the other parts of the Iowa Shelter, we actually talked to the, through their management group. I would assume for as far as anything that would go on there, and I'm thinking that they're the ones to talk to because there is part of the town forest out here somewhere beyond that that you would yes. cross, but. It was my feeling anyway, but they would be the ones that we would be talking to as opposed to talking with you folks here. And for all I know, you guys are all in the same. I don't really know. Um, who's, who's are you talking about the Conservation Commission? Right. Yes. Yeah. That uh, I don't know, Josh Walker, who lives right up the road up here, has been pretty active with us. He's been around talking to the mm -hmm. landowners and stuff and talked to people, right. and he knows somebody on the commission. 
and they were going to talk about it at one of their meetings, but I don't know. In the summertime, apparently, they're just like the rest of us. They don't meet right, regularly. They don't, things, you know, they meet you know, in the summer, they, but they would be the, the group you need to talk to about the forest. Yeah. And my understanding is that uh, Northfield is very much like Berlin as far as being really recreational, pro recreational, wanting to have those sorts of things. That small piece of Norwich property that's involved in there, but we've already got a vast trail on Norwich, so everybody's thinking that they, you know, normally they'd be amicable to just making an extension of that. We've uh, talked with the folks at the poor farm, and they seem to be more than happy. I'm kind of glad to hear that somebody might have it a little more organized, because apparently some of the people are wanting into their deer yards and things that they're, they don't mind people being out there, they just don't want them in certain places. Yeah. But the but the, the key part of it is to be able to get from here and under the interstate and over there and then connect on to the Irish Hill Trail. So that's right here, right? What are you talking about? Yep. That's, really cool. that's yeah. Irish Hill yeah. right there. The trail starts. So you're talking about not right. in this part of the road, but... Right. We, this, we stopped with a GPS there, but we would be coming, uh, let's see, around up in the... That's the Four Corners, right? Mm -hmm. So we'd be coming right up above the, the water here, around, underneath, picking up, getting out into the field, and this is the end of Black Road right here. I don't know if it's easier to see on that one there. I drew uh, some lines on it. To see and Black Road that. comes down. Yep, this straight part is Black Road down and, in here. And that's where it intersects with yep. this road. Yep, yep. Along and there. it turns up. It turns up into here. We were initially going to only be looking at it over here just to get under the interstate and drop down here and along the edge there's an old road down in there but that's all city Montpelier down there right. and you know you can understand that I mean it's <clears throat> real or imagined you know if people are nervous about the water supply they can see mm -hmm. where you would want to do that <clears throat> we, we crossed the watershed up in Barrytown and have for God forever without any incident up there so the only place you'd really need to be on town roads other than you're allowed to cross at 90s would be from the culvert down here. Yep, where the old road comes in. Yeah, and then underneath the throughway and then... And then down the stretch of Black Road. Yeah. And then a little bit of, I, I think of this as the Pond Road, but mm -hmm. I don't know for sure what, yeah, right what, what the official name of it is. Right. What's that? Brookfield Road. That isn't the lower one. No, the lower ones. what that is called. Okay. So you'd be on Crosstown Road, go under the interstate. Yeah. You're going cross lots, then over to Black Road and back of houses, still on Crosstown Road, going up the hill. I'm trying to get where I am. Oh, you're right. You you yeah. come out of the uh, the old road, the original road there and turn left and you're on the side of the road. Once you go under the bridge, just like if you were going to turn and go up Pond Road, if you look, there's kind of a cut in the ground where people have had, I'm sure they must have accessed that at one time or another up over that hill, up over there, and then through, there's two or three landowners there that Josh has talked to, and come up, there's a little little teeny, it's like a you know, five foot bridge there now that they use, but to update that so we could actually get over it with a groomer, come up and down the edge of Black Road, and then intersect and swerve and go up to pick up Irish Hill up through there for with the sled traffic and whichever was preferable for you guys to be able to get somebody that parked in Applebee's with his ATV around here without causing anything too much of a nuisance to get onto the same trail and ride up through there in the summertime. So with that map, you're not really using a lot of the road, a lot of the town road, you're using what, maybe a quarter of a mile? That, that's a good guess. I, sh I didn't even think I should have measured it when I was out there doing that, but I didn't today when I just, you know, before I came here. Yeah, there's not that much of it. Because yeah, you it, jump back up into the road over here by the, the dry hydrant. Dry hydrant. I can't picture where that. Well, I guess it, it did away with that with the water system. <laughs> so the hydrant right out here where they, uh, the road goes into the little field at the yep. end of Shed Road. Yep. So you come into the road there, yeah. go across the culverts, under the throughway, yeah. and then and over then to the hill. Yeah. And then out through and pick up through the old dip where the bridge washed out down there in Black Road and then pick up on the end of it. And that's pretty, there's a lot of, a lot of shoulder there. So you'd probably, you'd be well into the right of way down through there and then 
around that little bit of the Brookfield Road to get that section there. The scale? No, that doesn't print. Does it print a scale on here? Yeah, it does. A quarter miles, about an inch is a quarter mile on here. So, just trying to think what the terrain is like right there. Is that steep? Way steep where? Well, right before you turn into the parking lot. Right here? Yeah. <coughs> this just, section. There is uh, the drop down as you're going out on the left hand side drops down quite a bit, but the road is pretty wide there. I'm sure there'll be some snow build up there. And on the inside, there's a bit of a ditch and then it goes up there. Probably, I was driving along estimating four to five feet where it rolls down and then goes up, mm -hmm. figuring that the snow usually as it goes over there, fills that in pretty quick and it makes a pretty flat surface because the sleds are only 48 inches wide. You know, the groomer itself is much bigger, but usually if Usually if the ground's lower, just the natural winging of the snow levels it off. But if it's not, they usually will drive along with the groomer and just write one run track on it and it'll squash it down and make a trail up the side of the road. And for this, we need to have our snow builder. Yeah, we need to do an ordinance. That we just did away with. <laughs> that was just I, I heard a rumor of that effect <laughs> yeah. like that, and yeah. chances are at least one of us was thinking about this then at the night you were voting on that. So I think you didn't realize that. Yeah, we, we tried we, to get the word out at the time. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I, I, and, um, but well, this is something that as it may, it's already happened. So yeah. we'd have to, yeah. you know. Well, Dana, uh, could you take and uh, get a hold of uh, VLTC and see what the other towns have for, uh, for their snowmobile ordinances? Sure. And we'll try to draft something up that will be agreeable to everybody. Okay. So what uh, what are we thinking about uh, summertime traffic? Is that was that something that you would really prefer us not to try to go down Shed Road or how, what to get from the parking lot around to pick up the the trail there for, for the, the ATVs? ATVs? Yeah. I have a concern with Shed Road. Yeah. Um, well, usually the, they, they put it, the gates locked on the on the um, parking lot for the town shed anyway. Over here? Yeah. I mean, we have, I, I think my concern is, um, obviously we have a lot of traffic in and out between mm -hmm. highway trucks and the police cars and yeah. citizens coming to the town office. Right. Sure. Um, so I have a concern about that. Yeah. As long as you have permission from the landowners, I don't see any... I mean, it makes more sense to probably just use the trail you're maintaining for the snowmobiles. Right, I see, but I don't know that that's viable out there. It goes fairly close to one of the houses that they were, my, what I heard was, you know, in the wintertime they didn't mind too much, but I wasn't sure in the summertime if they'd let them go through there. I mean, that would be the optimum all the way around, but I wasn't sure that was something mm -hmm. that we would be able to do, so we're looking to see. They, it's a lot easier to run those down, down a piece of road than it is a snow machine. Yeah. Would it be something that would be viable for them to just come out of the driveway and go to the Four Corners and down Crosstown Road? Would that be a, a better alternative? Well, so I think probably the less you're on the road, the better it is for everybody. Yeah. What, what kind of volume are you talking about? I mean, if, if you're allowed to do it, there's no restriction on the volume. And, and you certainly got 20 or 30 ATVs going down there because they can now, and that's going to be a problem. No, no doubt. Of course, one good thing is the snowmobiles and ATVs are nowhere near as loud as they used to be. Well, I, yeah, I actually wasn't thinking of loudness as much as just safety. You know, this road's pretty busy sometimes out here. It, it is. There's a lot of traffic. On I'm surprised that. how busy um, it is. Um, <coughs> and I, and I, my personal opinion is, is the four corners wouldn't be appropriate. Right. How, how old do you have to be to? drive uh, something like that on a road you got to be 16 can you no i believe so you have to be 16. Have to have you have to have an operator's license you you do yeah and uh i i don't know at this time that you're required to have passed this go through a safety course like you are with a snow machine but they certainly encourage it they starting to hold those around mm -hmm. but uh, yeah i'm pretty sure it's 16. i think over in new hampshire where we go i think it's 14 over there you see they they use the 
I always fly to Bedford connectors and stuff and go surprisingly well. But uh, the my guess would be that the most likelihood where there'd be any sort of a traffic is most likely on a Saturday or you know a Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon when go figure. I mean that's when hobbyists are out have time right. to go out and do things. Most of the rest of the time, not a lot happening because they're they're all got other things to be doing. I mean I I would agree that I would think going out through the four corners was was the least viable of any option yeah. there would be yeah, there. Be and uh, you know. What are we saying that we're not thinking the shed road at all is a viable possibility, or is that? I was just... going to suggest that maybe I work on a model um, ordinance so that you can yeah. see it at your next meeting, and then you can discuss at that time what you feel about shed road. And in the meantime, I would speak with the police chief about um, yeah. what his thoughts are. Um, yeah. Well, and that was. One of the reasons it seemed like not a bad idea, because usually when you're driving past the police department, you know, people people tend Excellent to watch their piece of cues a lot more, so they're a lot yeah. less apt to be yeah. going right up and down the road. So I could bring that back to you on the sure. on the twentieth. Yeah, yeah, if you think so, any other traffic control needs to be done in any parts of this, right? That would be good okay. to know. Right. All right. Well, that certainly sounds like as we would have thought, it would be ideally if they followed the same way that yep. the sleds went and we can talk with those landowners some more too and see can we keep the, this oh absolutely oh. so we'll bring this up again next meeting which is the 20th 20th and it's certainly I'm, a welcome to come yeah. certainly and i'm sure you're familiar because you've already got them from us from the vast angle this is what the uh a copy of the yep. four-wheeler permission slip which i'm sure they modeled it from the l and it looks yep. very similar to that right okay do Thank you very much, Mr. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, and the train is here now. Yeah. You're next. Mahandra and Jim um, are in to talk to you about they are working on the exit seven project that we've discussed in the past, which is a bridge that's being replaced over um, the access for exit 7 and Crosstown Road. Um, they, <clears throat> you have a copy of the email that Mahandra sent me with some options that they'd like considered. Um, I have copies if you need. I, okay. They should have it, but <laughs> hold on to them in case we need that. And I have your uh, map that you gave us and maybe you'd just like to explain the project to the board and and what your preferred yeah. option is yeah um want me to go, go <laughs> right. uh, so yeah we're put, replacing four bridge decks um over 62 and over crosstown road um i think during the scoping phase somebody from v trans came in here and was talking about doing a temporary off ramp onto the highway and we scratched that idea we're now doing crossovers on the interstate um, so the big issue for the town is whether or not during demo of the two bridge decks over across town road if, if it's feasible to do a short-term closure to get those done expeditiously and maybe at a cheaper cost um, and what that entails whether it be at night whether it be um, on a weekend, if, if it's feasible at all. Um, and so that's why we're here to discuss that with you. So when you say short time, what's that mean? Um, we think we can, if, it, if it's during the day, we think we can do it in two days, but we just leave it closed overnight as well. And maybe there's an eight hour period the contractor can't work. Mm -hmm. So we think they can demo the deck in two days. Um, if it's at night, we would probably need three nights and we could reopen it during the day. During the day. So would you detour um, Montpelier, from Montpelier headed south and from South Ferry headed north? Yes. And detour on Airport Road? Yes. That's what we had talked, we've had discussions yep, about sure. this earlier. Yeah, and it would be the same, same <clears throat> detour. They wanted to detour through downtown Barry. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Okay. If we can detour through Airport Road, I think it makes sense. Okay. I mean, those 
those few days of inconvenience are going to save a lot of time on the bridge. Yeah, it would be. Um, so there's two bridges. So it would be, and actually one of them has to be done in phases. So it would actually be three times during a two-year period where that would happen. Right. But before they were doing crossovers, we were talking about six weeks. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> right. So the <clears throat> local access to that neighborhood over there, you have to go over by Stewart Road, I'd expect. You know the roads better than me, yeah. so yeah. I'm, I'm just afraid Stewart Road is going to become the, the, the detour. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it will. I mean, if, if there's a school bus that needs to get over there, or if there's a... a and yeah, I mean, preferably, we're not going to be doing this when school buses are going to be. Right. Is your plans to do it in the summer of 2020? Um, it will be 2020 and 2021. So it would be, because it's two construction seasons, we're going to ship traffic over to southbound or northbound, however the contractor decides to do it, and have, and have traffic on that barrel the interstate for one year and then shift them over um, the next year so hmm. so if we're talking detour it's to detour people because Crosstown Road is close right and that would only be like we said a 40-hour window or at night if that's preferred I know there are a couple residences close by and noise could be an issue so um, so if I were on the other side of the over underpass, whatever we call it, I'd have to go up down Stewart Road to get out, or, or down, or the, the other way, way. Yeah, right. yeah. or down to Northfield. Right. <laughs> or Northfield. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were heading north and you had crossed the northbound traffic onto the southbound lane, yep. How would you exit? Um, that's why one of the bridges is phased. Okay. Because we got to keep traffic on that side to get them off. Correct. So we're gonna have one lane of traffic still going in that direction. That will be the exit, per se. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. So, I mean, we're, we're here because we're getting towards final plans and we want to find out if we can give the contractor an option to do this. Now, he won't have to bid it that way because we have shown the plans, phased construction, on Crosstown Road. Now, the feasibility of that is a little tricky because you got ledge on both sides and widening the road to get traffic around, and it's going to take longer to do it that way. If we can get traffic completely away from the area, it's gonna expedite it. But, um, so, you know, if the town says, no, we're not gonna allow that, then, you know, we won't give them that option, but. We think we can save, I mean, again, there's no town money involved, it's on the interstate, but you know, from a state perspective, we think we can save like $10,000 a deck, so $40,000. And everything stays up there. Except it might get dropped on the road, and if it does, any damage that's done, the contractor will be required to fix it. So basically what we are trying to do is we are giving five different options to the contractor and he's going to pick what is cheapest for him. Uh, so we want to make sure that the, all the options that we are listing on the drawings for him to pick one is okay with you guys. Mm -hmm. okay from the, if you have objection to any of this, we're going to take that out of it. Well, I don't see any problem with I mean, if it's if if you're going to be able to get the decks done in would you say 30 hours yeah so in that 40 40 hours but in that I, I mean i would think they would saw cut them from the top and then just lift them out because they're not going to be doing any crane work above traffic so if we can't close the road then that's not going to be an option for them they're going to have to do it more manually and they're going to have to shield underneath yeah. to make sure that nothing drops down because you're going to have traffic under there mm -hmm. so it's easy for me to say that two days doesn't sound unreasonable to me. No, I'm all, not affected. All of these options are better than the original yeah. options. Yeah, yeah we sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I would worry about traffic going underneath where they're working. 
that's good. Yeah, I mean that's on the contractor. That's that's why I said they're going to bid that risk if they if they cannot shut down traffic on Crosstown Road, then they're going to bid that risk into their bid if something happens, mm -hmm. you know. But isn't that what we're talking about, closing that? Right? Yeah, right, 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 right. If, yeah. I'm just saying if you guys if don't allow it, if you don't allow yeah. it. Yeah, it's probably the safer of the options, too, other than trying to take and shield uh, the underneath the bridge from dropping down. Yeah, but if nothing's there, you can't hit it. That's right. That's true. <laughs> Yep. You can try. <laughs> well, I, I think it's logical. Yeah, I do too. And so, is there any objection to night work? I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, we'll talk to the property owners in the area and yeah, I was going to see say what their needs are. I don't see many of them here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, if you can send out letters to them or. Yeah, we definitely would do that. Yeah. So, is night work favorable for you? Uh, I, actually, longer. preferable would be during the day because at night they're going to have to bring in all this lighting. And right. there was no other plans really to do night work because it's not going to be accelerated construction. They're just going to do the decks in one one construction season on well, each barrel. So the other thing is, is during the day nobody's home. Yeah, well, that's likely. the way to be. They did night work on 302 two years ago, and it was horrible for people that live down there. Yeah. Which I'm one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was and they did it. The advantage is to us, you know, <laughs> we are going to leave this to the contractor, so they are going to pick the one they can give it. Yeah, so if we, if we don't want night work, we can just tell them no night work, and we'll do it. We'll, and it, we can leave it up to you. We can tell the contractor that it has to be a weekend if there's or if if it's preferable, if you have a days in mind, um, you know, no, affecting please. work commutes, I guess, and, you know, if, if that's an issue, then we just tell them they have to do it during the weekend. Well, what time, well of course, I mean, I think the, the more important thing would be that they can figure out uh, when the work is starting to stop. Right. Yeah, and we'll have public outreach on this, so you guys, they'll know well in advance, I would mm -hmm. say at least three weeks okay. prior to when we do that. But I mean, if you're going to take in, if, if, the, if the option is to be able to close cross town, I mean, people getting to work would want to be out of there by 7. Mm -hmm. Right, just get out of there early. Yeah. And uh, give a contractor till 4.35 to... Yeah, and we can spec those hours. I mean, we thought we would probably need a little longer days because yeah. um, we were thinking maybe like two 16-hour days and keep it closed that night if it was on the weekend. Yeah. But if, if we want to do it during the week and we need to get people in and out, we can certainly do that, too. It just might take three days instead of two. Yeah, I guess I, I would defer to what the residents right there would say, whether, you know, night work is feasible or, you know, what the impacts of different timings are on them. I, I mean, it, it's not the residents right there, though, right? It's a whole community that's going to be shut off. Sure, but, so but, in, but in terms of the you know the implications of if you're starting at you know at a certain time or if you're working at night and there's somebody that's right there, um, they're going to be much more impacted mm -hmm. by this. I mean, presumably we you know, we would be able to hear the construction even here. Absolutely, yeah. It's gonna it's it's not going to be pleasant. So that's why we either you know talk about relocating people for two nights and do a hotel or something. Um, we always have that option, but hotels are. People, well, you're gonna hear it there. People don't like that. You'll probably hear it there too. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking Bermuda looks like <laughs> great. Plenty of rooms because the interstate is lost. <laughs> so, I mean, if day the day is preferable to us too, we just if that wasn't an option, we wanted to consider night. So, it seems to me day, as you say, during the week, people are gone or more apt to be. Yeah, yeah. fewer people around. You yeah. know, have to listen to it. Well, if you're going to do that, I got a suggestion is is to close Crosstown Road from Riverton over to through traffic because that's going to put a heavy burden on Stewart Road and, and Hill Street with all that traffic coming from that side of the mountain. I mean, just like we do in the spring of the year when it's mud season, it goes it to through traffic. Then you're only going to have the residents that you're going to have to deal with up here on the hill and do away. Because Northfield Street will be done by then. That's correct. Yeah. And, I mean, a couple days is not going to kill anybody that if they got to go around. 
but that would be one thing that the state would, if they could sign it and close it to through traffic, starting in Riverton, and that will cut down a lot of the traffic. Uh, when are you going to have all your options listed out uh, to a contractor? Um, well, we will be we'll be getting uh, our final plans together shortly, and then we will be we'll have a whole contract plan phase. So, I mean, we're are we talking uh, nine months from now? Yeah. I was just thinking when you take and get the uh, when you get the uh, final. Uh, the final plans you're going to give the contractor to bid on if we give get a set the data so we can look at them. And yep. And then we'll ask them to provide us with a, a traffic control plan right early on in the construction phase. Um, and they also provide a schedule which can all obviously fluctuate depending on where they're at, but we would require a three week notice if that's good enough for you guys for the closure. So and and there would be a couple message boards that would go up to say that. So did you say there's still five options out there? I think it was four. But, and Mahindra listed sure. them in his email. Sure. But. Right, but I, I, I just yeah, fully remember we've sort of gone through this a couple of times. But these aren't any of the options we talked about. Yeah, yeah, though, that was more of a grand scale. Now we've got traffic control figured out. Oh, so so we're just crossing over on the interstate. So we're not doing any kind of off ramps to town roads or anything like that. Right. So all the exits are going to remain open. So this um, is just the smaller details. Right. Yes. Yeah, but right. And you have public relations. You have someone that would get the word out and advertise. We and, will have a public and work relations with the neighborhood office, officer and on this project yeah. who will do that because yeah. we also have an issue where we have to kind of shift traffic on on 62 and we're going to have to go down to one lane um, when they do the demo of those bridges so there's going to be a light there certain times of the day so or flaggers however they choose to do it but um, so yeah we'd, we'll definitely have a public relations officer who can communicate all of that i just think we, we get a little closer to the to putting it out to, for the contractors to bid on we can see some of the plans so we have a better idea of it. Sure, absolutely. Well, we'll we can send the town, once we have uh, final plans complete, we'll send the town a, yep. a set of those plans. Yep. All your options. Yep. Yep. Does the board thinking that they might allow that to happen for us down the road to be closed? I just, just for my... I think so. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it makes a certain amount of sense. If, so they could go and plan on yeah. that when they as one of the options they're putting up to the contract when they put out their solicitation because I mean it's either it's either going to be uh, uh, chronic or acute sure you know, yeah I, mean, I think a lot of people would probably appreciate one acute yeah. thanks I just wanted to make yeah sure I so it, yeah. it would be down to one lane probably for I'm just guessing like a week or two or you could just get in and get out. And, yeah. be done so and it, and it will be cheaper because they don't have to worry about well it just makes sense concrete to me, I falling think to, on the traffic right yeah, I think it may, I think it makes sense to me just to close the road for two days or three days yeah. and get it done and then move on okay so I would ask the town to just we'll, we'll send you final plans and at that time if you would consider hours of the day that you would allow it if you want it to be back open um, or if you want it done on a weekend, just just consider what yeah. what would be best for you, and we'll we'll try to make that work. Yeah. Well, hopefully by then we'll hear from some of the residents. Okay. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with this project. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Dodson, Mirror Lake Road? I don't see Mr. Dodson, so I would go to the next. Uh, speed limit change request on Browns Mill Road. Um, and I guess Mr. Winter yes. is, is talking about that. As you know, we've been working on um, the speed limit change on Browns Mill Road. I wrote letters to um, all the residents, owners at Browns Mill Road. 
I did hear from two um, residents, um, well, three, including the, with the winters. Um, we've had the police down there twice to kind of monitor the traffic. Um, at, at your request, we put the speed limit um, lighted sign down there. Um, we, the, the traffic count is very low there. It's a road that you have to want to go there if, if you're going to be on it, because usually it's just residents coming and going. Um, and I guess I'll let Mr. Winter um, Sure, go thank you. Forward. I'm Chris Winters. I live on at 36 Browns Mill Road. It's the house right on the corner off of Route 12 in, in Browns Mill. Uh, we moved there several years ago. We have property on both sides of the road right there. Um, shed and a basketball court on on one side and the house on the other. Um, so, and we have uh, four kids. Um, and the speed limit is at 35. We've you know, checked in with the town a couple of times thinking maybe that was a little high. You gotta be pretty challenging to get to 35 miles an hour from Route 12 down to where it hits this narrow bridge and makes a sharp right turn, it basically tees right there. Um, and it's a fairly narrow road. <clears throat> and we've checked with the town a couple of times, as I said, and for whatever reason, it kind of, kind of fell through with the previous administrators over the last several years. I think we started in 2011. Um, my wife has checked back in with Jeremy a couple of times and he's brought it up again and, and, and Dana most recently and uh, we'd really like to kind of see this through. I think the chief of police agrees that that's kind of a high speed limit for that road. Um, there's several, you wouldn't know it, but maybe you know it, but there's several houses on that road, a lot of children on that road. Uh, gets more traffic than we ever thought it would. Um, a lot of cars going through at different times of the day. Uh, plus it's a school bus stop. So mm -hmm. during when school's in session, we have, I guess on average, about 10 kids come from that road and from uh, Lord Road and further down the road to congregate at that spot. So we just really love to see it uh, drop down 35 to 25. Uh, that we, I think that's still too fast, but um, understanding that uh, I think 25 is what makes sense there uh, based on previous traffic studies and speed limit studies, and I guess I've heard, and I don't know if this is true, but maybe the road got missed for whatever reason uh, when that was done several years ago. Uh, so we're just asking to have the speed limit lowered from a, from a 35 to a 25, and we would appreciate trying to see it through this time and, and getting it done. What was the result of the police going down there? Did they find a lot of people speeding? They did not. Mm -hmm. um, I asked them if they was visible. Obviously, if you see a police officer, you're going to be careful. but. Um, he did not, he went down one early morning and he went down in an afternoon um, and he did not find people speaking. But 35 is in street, like Chris was asking. Right, and I, I think the highest someone was going was 24 miles an hour or something like that. But again, it was a very limited um, look at, it. you know, a look at. Normally on a street you do like a hundred, the state recommends like a hundred. Cars. It would take a while to get yeah, out so, cars. That would take quite a long time. You, is um, your feeling that people are going over 35 miles an hour? No, I don't think anyone is going over 35. Do you think they're going 25 miles an hour? Uh, yeah, every once in a while someone zips through there. they got to really punch it to do it, but they do. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, lowering it to 25, I mean, that seems rational enough to me, but. Will it make a difference? Will it make a difference? Yeah, that's what or is it a regular ride the same speed the driving? Yeah, today? I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> because if they're not going over 25 today, then what have we accomplished? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. But I just didn't think putting it to 15 would work right. either. You know? yeah. So what, what does it entail? It's a ordinance change. And again, we'd have to have the public hearing. Um, it's a 60 day look back. You have to wait before the ordinance takes effect. But you need to have it in the ordinance in order for the police to enforce it. And then, of course, the big point is you need the police down there in order to catch someone who is exceeding 25, which is always a difficult thing because they're never where you want them to be at that exact time, unless it's you driving. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how much of a difference it'll make either, but it's ridiculous that it's 35, really. It's just. I don't, you'd feel out of control if you drove 35 miles an hour on that road. So if it were posted, it would just sort of be a steady reminder. I mean, at a lower. Well, it'd be posted for for 25, and then if um, 
for the ordinance to be enforceable, we'd have to have it in our ordinances. Right. It's a housekeeping yeah. issue. Yeah. I think we should go down and change the signs up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you <laughs> could. <laughs> I mean, if nobody's going over 25 anyway, whether it's right. <laughs> you could just don't tell me. To them out somewhere. Yeah. Right. What, wasn't there a question about a children at play sign? That has come up. Um, I don't know. I've heard different things about the um, efficacy of children at play signs, so whether that slows people down or distracts them. Or I'd love to have a children at play sign there. I don't know that slows me down. Yeah. Uh, Does that take an ordinance? Uh, to have a children at play sign? Yeah. No. We talked about that last time. Yeah. Yeah. So 25 children at play? Yeah. yeah. I would do it. I think it would help. Right. I mean, it doesn't seem, I, I mean, changing the ordinance. I mean, as you say, I don't, from what I'm understanding from you, you're not looking for someone to sit down there and enforce the 25. No, I don't. It's, it wouldn't be worth anyone's time. I right. think it's, it's a couple of people. I, it may not change their behavior, but it just will bring some awareness <coughs> that right. you don't have free reign to go 35 miles an hour on this road. Right. right. The other residents that I've heard from, I heard from two other residents, and they're both encouraged it to be lowered to 25. Doesn't seem like there's any harm in that. To me. Well, we'll do this while you confirm. Everybody here in favor of uh, just uh, starting the public hearings on this? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Then we can put up the children place on the meantime, right? Yep. Sure. Okay. I'll have that. I'll redo the ordinance and schedule the public hearing for the next meeting. Thank you, folks. I really appreciate it. Sure thing. Have a good day. Thank you, too. Okay. Traffic signal replacement of Fisher Road, Berlin Mall. There's Road two. Hospital. Yeah, there's two. Um, I have two issues with that. Um, one is. The first is a maintenance agreement that with East Coast signals to maintain the traffic lights. We've had, um, East Coast signals is really the only vendor that we've been able to find that can fix those lights for us when they, when they happen. Um, we had a gentleman before, and I guess he retired him, mm -hmm. am I right? Mm -hmm. And um, so East Coast signals has done it. They've been cooperative. I think their pricing is, is favorable. Um, they have asked for an agreement, which I gave you a copy of. It's the same agreement that they have with the town of Essex um, for their lights. I sent it over to Rob Halpert. He did not have an issue with it. So the first thing I'd like to ask the board is to approve the maintenance agreement with East Coast Signal. Um, that would ensure us that we have a vendor to fix the lights, and I guess it would ensure them they have a customer. Your motion? I'll move it. Uh, <clears throat> I'll move that we approve the uh, chair to sign the maintenance agreement with East Coast Signals. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. That was the easy part. The next part is um, we had budgeted $25,000 to replace those lights. And um, obviously, we um, are fooling ourselves because it's a lot more money than that. The latest estimate um, is $82,500. That is including um, the motion detection for if you're on Fisher Road turning into the mall, and you're in the left lane, it would decide that there's a car there and it needs to signalize you to, so you can get in. We are losing that with the work on Fisher Road because they're going to be milling that, that area. And right now, it's underground wires. Stop me if I'm there's going a into a problem. There's, there's a loop, loop underground. The, yeah. new, the new system would be um, at, in, the, yeah, in the light itself. Um, we wanted to have the cabinet replaced. That was a 1983 cabinet, and the electrical service is also 1983 vintage. Um, and then he's also given a price to replace the signal heads. Most important right now is the turn detection. And I'm wondering if we could either 
find $82,500 or if we could phase this over a period of time? So right now we have $25,000 budgeted. That's right. Well, I can see the cabinet and the electrical service. Right. Is it, so, is it strictly necessary for us to have the, the left turn detection and the side street detection? That's, that's what runs the whole thing. But but couldn't it just be on a just be on a fixed timer instead? It, it's it's going to be actually once it's I'm sorry, Tim. Um, it's when it grinds when they take away the loop, mm -hmm. they will have to put it on a standard where it just turns on whether there's an automobile there or not. Right. Is what you're I think you're asking. Yeah. yeah. And so yes. But, but I'm just saying is, you know, can we can we live without it? Shave this down and not have the left turn detection, not have the side side street detection and save on some of the equipment, perhaps add it later. Mm -hmm. The, uh, <clears throat> what would it cost to have them put the loops in temporarily until we can afford the cameras? Uh, I don't think we got a price on, no. on having that. We could the loops cost that. like nothing compared really? to yeah. the cameras. The problem with the loops is every time you pay, you get to replace them. Yeah. Because they get ground up. No. And we've had trouble in the winter too with the crowds. You know. No, now the, the eighty two thousand is is everything, right, Dana? That's right. Eighty two five. Yeah. Yeah. So if we did just the cameras, it's not gonna be eighty two thousand. Well just the cameras would be twenty three. Yeah, see so Well, you, you do the cameras plus the cabinet. Because I don't believe the camera's gonna work with that cabinet, right? Um uh he's Said that he thought they would. He did say that he thought they would. Um, right. Obviously, if he told us no, it would be a different answer. Right. Yeah. Well, that's fifty thousand there. You put in the cameras and do the. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Could we find twenty five and do fifty thousand dollars worth, and then come back and do the upgrade, change the signal heads next year? Is what I was going to ask. I don't. I don't understand what he's saying by signal heads because when we were, when we met over there, he said that the signals are fairly new and that the only problem there is is now they've gone to LED lights and they're not. They are when they change them now, but uh, but he said other than that, the signal heads were good. I thought mm -hmm. he said, and the crosswalk thing signal is already there. So they didn't have to do anything with that because they got the thing when they push the button and it changes the light. I was so. under the impression that we could do this in steps. Um, could we find another 25000 Yes, we could. Well, I just think that <clears throat> I could be all wrong, but I, I think that you will need new components in the cabinet to be able to use cameras versus loops. So. All I'm saying is I think it's logical to do that all at once. The cabinet and the, and the cameras. So you're talking 50 grand. That's what I'm saying. So you're going to find 25, but we're not throwing anything away. Right. But the Or if we can just replace the cabinet, the electrical service, the third item in that there, we get it right around 25,000, replace that, and then just not have, not and just have for the fixed time as it is right now, and then phase in the other cameras when we can maybe increase the budget item for next year. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the electrical service has never been a problem. Okay. We've had problems with the cabinet, and um, they were able to get parts, but now it's, it's getting to the point where they, they're having a hard time getting parts. So. And right. they, they've been robbing Peter to pay Paul there on some of it. But when, when that cabinet was put in, they didn't have cameras. No. Everybody used loops. Right. So that's my point. Yeah. I, I, it's, I guess the way he talks is, is it's just, it just sends the signal electrically somewhere. Is there. It closes a set of contacts and does the same thing the loop yeah. does, mm -hmm. but it's a different, it's a different yeah, voltage wish. and frequency yeah. than the loop. Yeah. So I just think that they're going to have to put parts in to make it work, so why not do the cabinet at the same time because you got to do it eventually. You don't yeah. toggle it up. Right. Mm -hmm. And end up spending $92,000 because we had to buy parts to make it work. Right. right. <laughs> so it, we do only the two parts, the controller yeah. and the cabinet? This year. This year. Because we've never had a problem with electrical. And he says that the, the electrical service has been here 
original service, but I mean, it's, it's, we never had a problem with it. So I think he's suggesting that since they're in it, yeah, that now's the time to. I see. Yeah. So we leave the, the heads and the sensors for another time, or the heads and the electrical service for another time and spend fifty. Yeah. Just to get the detection in in the, in the new cabinet. But is is it going to be more expensive then to go back and to to, t to take out the old electrical service? Uh, no. Yeah. Because it's just a feed from the meter. Yeah, so okay. there, there's a meter there, and then you just get a conduit that goes up and into the panel box. Okay. I, I'm i for, if you can find 25 on for doing those, the, the cameras in the cabinet. Okay. But I don't know what everybody else feels like. I just, I don't know how many delays we're going to have if, we, if we're doing it on time. The hospital gets out. You know, and yes, sure. I just think that if we can find 25, we'll know it's working properly. So right. does, does this include emergency vehicle preemption? Do you know? Where they can essentially turn the, turn the lights on or off? No, they don't now. Okay. No, I don't think it does, but I certainly can ask that question. That's, I mean, that's um, Whether that's that, that might be something we should think about. Of course, 95% yeah. of it's coming from 62. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. So they usually so there's no light to get into the before yeah. the lights, but mm -hmm. I would ask. Um, we have had issues in the winter with the hospital traffic being held back because of the lights. Well, the the, pro the problem there is it's it's the cabinet yeah. there now is timed. This whole thing, and you can't change the time now. Thirteen. Right. And you had a whole shift changing. Oh, yeah. 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 And then, of course, yeah, the hospital put the new entrance in no. over there, and they moved the everything back because yeah. right. now all their tractor trailer trucks that are going in there to deliver or whatever come up and use that. They used to go in the other they lower entrance. Just they won't let them do that no more. So they had to set the traffic way back so the trucks could make the swing in there, and then it doesn't give them time. So, so we had a problem over there, and the guy that retired came, and he had to change one of the boxes, and he had a, he had one in the cabinet, and then we changed it. So when he was there, he said, nobody's going to know what we're doing here. So he added time to it, and we haven't had a problem with it since. Gave the, gave the traffic coming out of the hospital parking lot more time. And of course, it does them all too because those both run off the same, yep. same controller thing or box. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of hours of the day when there's not a lot of traffic coming out of the hospital. No, no, they, yeah. They're holding up, holding up. The because right now, what sets the light on and off to, to change is the left hand lane that's going into the mall and the left hand lane that's going into the hospital. That's what changes, that's what does the whole thing to change. And of course, when they mill, they're going to take that loop out of there. But he said it'll still work, but the only problem you're going to get is somebody's going to be sitting over there. Well, why is that light green over there? There ain't nobody there. Mm -hmm. So, but, it, you know, if we, and they're not, they were supposed to start paving last night. Because mm -hmm. they're going to, they're working at night. They were going to start Sunday and night and mill it all and then pave it tonight. But they're being, with the rain and stuff, they got out of, sync with their schedule so now we're off until first of September mm -hmm. so that's why Dana and I talked about this to bring it up to you guys so that maybe East Coast if we could come up with the money East Coast could get the new detection system in the air before they come to pave and so that won't be a no issue when they do it because it'll be rolling on new detection system so where do we find this 25 grand we have a few a reserve fund. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. If we keep hitting it, it's not going to happen. So. Yeah. So we don't have a problem with the electrical service. We don't have a problem with the existing existing signals, other than the fact they're incandescent and they're not LEDs. Yeah. Well, that, he's changed quite a few bulbs, so we got quite a few LEDs in here now well, already. So all I'm saying is, <clears throat> we don't replace the heads now. We don't replace the electrical service. That should be around fifty thousand dollars. If you can find twenty five, I suggest we do that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a motion? Yes, please. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
as a poet. So it kind of comes down to you, Dana. <laughs> I will talk with the vendor and... and uh, I was thinking more about getting the other 25,000. Oh, sure. Well, Tim will be happy to contribute some of this stuff. Uh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Great. Look under the rug there. And <laughs> Don't look too closely. Yeah. You know. Okay, if that's the end of the East Coast Signals, uh, award of sand bid. Last time that we talked about the sand bid, um, as you know, we had some questions on the quality. I think Tim has done some research uh, with the um, successful, the lower bidder from the sand bid, uh, Hebert uh, Excavation Corporation. And you're satisfied that the quality issue that we had last year has been addressed. Mm -hmm. So we're suggesting that the board grant the bid to Hebert Excavation Corporation for $8.50 a cubic yard. Can you, can you remind me what the issue that we had last year was? Uh, it was? It was more dirt than it was sand. And we had a lot of trouble with it, with it going through the sanders and freezing. Then, and then freezing and then putting it down and the cars packing it on because there was no grip to it. And then we had to re-sand because the roads got slippery again. And so has he put up a pile of sand now that looks okay? Uh, what he had down there. Yes, so I went down and got a sample. So yeah. what's coming in here now? I've just seen a bunch of big trucks or is that I think that's gravel. Gravel, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So what was it, what was the issue in this? I mean what, Well what I I issues? didn't I didn't want to accept his bid until we had a, a sample. Mm -hmm. Because if he gives us the same scene we had last year, it's it's not worth it because it cost us a lot of money in the long run to do what we're not getting what we paid for. Yeah, exactly. And to be honest, we should have complained. Yeah. 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 But last winter it wouldn't have done any good to complain because he doesn't have a sand pit. He strips the field, they screen and take all the top off it and then it's sand underneath. So he they screen it and then at the end of the day they fill that hole back in. So that's not considered a pit. Mm -hmm. That way, they don't have to go through Amazon. So, <laughs> so what was happening is that we were getting some of the extra bits that he was covering. No, no, it's just, it, it was just mild. it wasn't it wasn't good sand. It was too much dirt in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But he's in a different area this year, and the sand is much better. It's like the the first year that we got it from him. And as we're getting it delivered, if we see something we don't like, we could have Yeah, I, I've already talked to Larry about it. I yeah. said, because he doesn't have it all put up yet for us. He's done a little, but uh, he was trying to finish a job, I guess, in Rochester or somewhere so before he started doing our singing. Were so, you satisfied you could get it at the time frame that you needed? Oh, yeah, yeah, it won't take them long once they get it. So, so, so let me just be the, let me be the paranoid guy and say, you know, a couple months in, or a couple loads in, what he's delivering is just junk. What's the chance that we're I'm, I'm usually the one putting it up, so I would see it. So uh, are, are we going to be able to react quickly enough to find, to go back to Tabor and be able to well, if, if, if it comes to that, we can get sand for the same price at $8.50 a yard from the pages, and it's good sand. The pages will not bid because he has antique equipment, and he's so afraid that something's going to break down, and he's going to be out of commission, and he's not going to be able to produce the sand for us, and that could cause a loss of us, and he doesn't want that on his shoulders. But he told me that if we needed sand, that we could come buy our sand at 850 a yard and take as much as we want. But it's not going to be a bid where he's held responsible. Perfect. Thanks. So. I'll move that we award the sand bid to you for destination. At 850 a yard. Yeah, second. Any other discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. And a letter to encourage participation in sewer income survey, Dana? I was approached by the administrative person in the sewer division to if the board would support sending a letter 
two residents um, asking for their support in filling out the survey that was sent out by the um, is it Rural Water Association that's doing the, the work for um, the Sewer Commission. This is for USDA loan on the project going down Payne Turnpike North. What is happening, we've had a very low response to the survey. Um, people are concerned with their personal information um, getting out there. Um, rural water, if we don't see any of that, we don't know, um, so it's nothing to do with us. Rural water is just tabulating all those figures. Um, they have literally pounded the pavement, knocked on doors, and um, they're really trying to get 50% response, and, and right now I'm not sure what the percentage is, but it's quite low. And this was the Tom, the, um, this was the suggested letter that Tom gave me. So they're not even responding to something at their door? No, no. <laughs> are we asking? And some of the doors that he's gone to probably he shouldn't have, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, are we asking them something they might not know? I don't think so. I think it's just people are, and I'm the same way. I mean, people, when you ask about your personal income and, and what it is, you yeah. feel a little uneasy sometimes. Right. So. I don't know if this would be the magic bullet to help them. Um, I'd I think like to think so. One, one of the things that I think would probably make sense to add in here. Um, is to make it clear that having this information makes our loans cheaper. Well, we got, what, a million dollar grant towards the water system because we qualify. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this <clears throat> people responding to the survey will reduce property taxes. Well, or actually, will reduce the sewer costs. Right. 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 And we'll reduce the cost of sewer, sewer usage or sewer the rates yeah. rates in the town. These went to all the sewer customers, am I right Correct. on that? So in other words, for example, I got one at the mm -hmm. other end of town. Um, but if someone, but this new sewer line go down Payne Turnpike to the chamber <clears throat> is a probably 12 year payback just in maintenance cost of that force main pump station. So this is going to save people in the long run that are sewer users, whether you're in Riverton or you're in, I mean. I think that's a good point that Jeremy has. Yeah, if we so I like think a, that yeah. if we could say that there's a reason why we want you to do this. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and I, you know, definitely respect what Tom put together here, but there's a lot of words mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of motivation for me opening a letter and seeing blah. If we can have Maybe some. So I, I see some some underlining in here. But if you can sort of in the in the same way that you would write like a press release, just get to it first thing. We need more responses to re, to lower. Pretty much rates. bullet points. Yeah, just right. straight away, okay. right there. The the rest of this is good information. Don't don't get me wrong. But no. if you, why should I give you my personal information? I should give you my personal information because okay. it will save money to the town. Okay. Right. I will work with Tom and we'll rewrite the letter, including that information, which right. I think is a very good point. And, and then I, I what I, the benefit I, is for if I do it. And, and I, I really do like the um, the assurances that it's completely confidential and that it's just distilled down to a single number yeah. because that's that's clear. Right. If you're getting this letter, this does affect you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Yeah. People don't sure. realize that the the right. like, well, I don't live on the right. yeah. well, It doesn't matter. Right. You know? Because everybody on the sewer, right. on the sewer system, is paying in in mm -hmm. some way. Right. I sent, I filled it out. <laughs> so you say. Were you the one person? Yeah, <laughs> that was the one they got. <laughs> um, but it's only residential customers, right? Well, that's yeah. on the town sewer. Yeah. yeah. So I do. And. <laughs> And I guess we're just sending it, even though it's people that have already done it. So we'll, we'll have some 
explanation of why they're getting a letter. You yeah. know, they might not need to you know, worry or about ha it. Have them to have them ask their neighbors or talk about it or something like that because it will you know ultimately drive the costs of the sure. of the project okay. down. So you would support signing that? We'll rewrite it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, okay, yeah. great. No, sorry, no, Dana. Yes, thank you. Uh, approval of slug board minutes from 618 2018, 625 2018, 702 2018, and 725 uh, 18. And we are missing one set from 723 that we don't have yet. So um, the June 18th minutes, there were a couple of agenda items that, that just don't have any anything written there. Did we skip over those? Uh, let me find where we are. Very, yeah, the very first page. Oh, we just didn't say what we did. Yeah, so is like, that what you're saying? Yeah, so like, so like I sure, can fill sure, that sure, in. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's not. I guess it's not critical if there's not not any action. But I was, I just didn't know if that was an oversight or if that was just intentional that there wasn't anything. I don't think it was intentional. I think it would just happen. Okay. You know, we usually put no public comment and the treasurer. Then we make up. Gave you the report, which. All right. Um, well, no, no. Nothing, Jeremy. I don't think there was really any discussion on those either. It was just information. Okay. okay. Well, I, no, I will just move. in my office. I'm trying to blow it out here. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I, um, I will move to approve the minutes for the June 18th, 2018 meeting as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Abstain. Yeah, you and Angelina were not here. Right. Right. Uh, this, the next meeting, the 25th, is the meeting um, that Jeremy was attended via telephone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Brad and Angelina were not here. Move to I'll move, yeah, I'll move to, no, sorry. I'll move to approve the meeting minutes of June 25th. Second. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain? Yeah, two abstentions would be good. Yeah. And guys have it. Um, now the minutes for July 2nd. The motion? You weren't there, Wayne, I don't no. Okay. It says it wasn't there. Okay. And I'm telling you it wasn't there. Move to approve the minutes for the July 2nd, 2018 meeting as presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those uh, who's the same? Aye. Two okay. And uh, those opposed, uh, motion carries. Let's see if that's the July the second. Twenty fifth. <coughs> All right. And now for the Wednesday, July twenty fifth minutes. Under appointment of employee Barry Town. Yeah. Is it two words? No. B, B A R R E. Oh. Right. <laughs> so, so I could have looked at that a hundred times and not seen it. Okay, thanks. Sure. <laughs> then I'll move to approve the minutes as well. <clears throat> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Abstentions? An abstention. Motion carries. And uh, license permits and vouchers. I'll move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant 19G03, the checks 18278 to 18326 in the amount of $69,405.44 with voided check 18279. 
as well as payroll warrant 19-02 for payroll July 8th, 2018 to July 21st, 2018 in the amount of 42,891.09, as well as payroll warrant 19-03 for payroll from July 22nd to August 4th in the amount of $42,886.04. Your second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And let's see here. Town Administrator's report. Thank you. Um, I've got some news on the Mirror Lake Road culvert. Um, John Grenier, our engineer, has told us that we do not need a wetlands permit to install the culvert and we don't need a stream alteration permit to install. He heard back from the agencies in question that we don't need them. He is waiting to hear back from Fish and Wildlife regarding any other restrictions. The lead time to order a culvert is six weeks. Um, he encouraged that we get it ordered, as we've discussed here before. Um, I was surprised that it is an aluminum, I have a hard time saying that, culvert. Oh, it is? And, and so I said to John, um, are you sure it's aluminum? And he told me that he felt um, the life stand is better with aluminum over concrete or galvanized steel. 35 to 50 years versus 50 to 75 years for aluminum. What's the cost? Uh, the cost 104,000, which the con which the vendor installs it. It's an aluminum box culvert. Yes, it's an aluminum. So that's less money than you. Well, that's well, that's, just that's the culvert. yeah, that's just the culvert. In other right. words, uh, it's, it's, they'd still have to put the contracting of the job out. They don't. Um, but the. Right. But wasn't that and what's the cost of a, of a concrete culvert? I don't have the cost of concrete culvert because okay. he recommended that we one. Had, we had an idea. It was one hundred and forty thousand. I thought I it was in was, the, yeah, like a hundred. A couple things together. So they were it so, They were somewhat similar, but I was thinking it was one hundred twenty-five or something. Something like, like that. that. Yeah. So we're going to take out a steel culvert and replace it with an aluminum box culvert. Yeah, like, like that. That's what it looks like? Mm -hmm. that looks that's like what the picture looks like. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that picture looks like. That's, 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 that's the exact same thing that Roxbury did on Mole Run Road when Irene went through. And how's it working? Good. It's what, they, what they do is they pour a, a concrete floor, floor hmm. and then that, that bolts down to it. What it saves a tremendous amount of money on is cranes. Yeah. With a concrete box culvert, you've got cranes there for days swinging uh -huh. the pieces together. Right. Where? Yeah, they, Dubois did that one on Vault Run and they just picked the whole thing right up and set it down on there and then they bolted it to the concrete. No, they, what they do is just take, they drill and, uh, dr and put anchors in it or they anchor it for, put put uh, J hooks in the concrete. Um, I, don't, I, th I think they drilled and anchored. I yeah. think they do because it can't go anywhere once it back home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's mainly just to hold it so it, when you're back filling it, it can't push it. But just the sheer strength. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. So, but it is an aluminum box culvert rather than a circular culvert. Yeah. Okay. But it would, uh, the lead time would be a lot less. A, a lot, lot less, less and we would have the, we'd have the a good chance of having it completed yeah. this year. This year. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. So we'll go forward. And I don't know who maybe he could suggest vendors that we could bid that to. Um, as far as the construction work? As far as the ordering of the box culvert. No, he suggested the vendor. He's, um, it is. Are there any other vendors? That's my point. Contact. Or are we required by our purchasing policy to put it up to bid? That's what I'm saying. Okay. I um, think we are. If it was concrete, I know we would get three vendors to bid on it. Are there three vendors of aluminum I don't know either, but I'll find out. Okay. Who, who do you yeah. suggest? Contact uh, Engineering Solutions, and they are from uh, 
Well, they're not from here. Um, I mean, ju just doing my, my I can't tell you right now. Google search there. I found that there, there's a number of vendors that are oh, okay. and overseas. All right. Then any of them close enough to be, uh, for the shipping not to be cost prohibitive? If we find that the, um, when I asked John about this, because obviously I would be asking our engineer about this, if he says that he would not, he doesn't have any that are, would be interested if they're too far away, I'm just saying a hypothetical here. Um, I'm concerned about getting this ordered and getting it here on time. What I think you're going to find is that that's the manufacturer and they have 16 vendors in New England to sell their product. Probably. And we can ask those um, <laughs> 16 vendors to give us a price. You know, they Dave, the same. Dave McShane. Yeah. Yeah, he was in Long and Roxbury. Yeah. I'm just saying that probably EJ Prescott's is a vendor for that company. Okay. You know, and so is. I mean, this is one of those ish, This is one of those things, in my opinion. I realize we have a purchase policy, but it's a bit of a single stream I think, item. Yeah. I think you'll find that there are multiple vendors that sell their product. You know, so I just don't want to hang up our right. process. We can get it. multiple bids on the same product as well. Because I would have to mm. have it write the you know the proposal. We'd have to advertise if we do it the way we're supposed to do bids. So. Um, so, and the idea was for us to buy the culvert and then to hire someone to actually install it and do the work. Uh, this vendor <clears throat> would um, would install the culvert, not do the construction work. Install the culvert, and I've asked John why that is, and it's because they want to install it so they can ensure it was installed properly. Mm -hmm. So all the contract has to do is pour a cement slab across the big hole. I would say that would be what they. And then backfill it yeah. afterwards. That's it. Cool. Yeah. But once the concrete slab is down, it can be used time and time again for different if the culvert should fail. Yeah. Another one bolts down. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, like a, it's just like a those concert builders. They got the yeah. put that small thing and then the thing sets down on it. Sounds really good, but you gotta remember you're pouring that slab underwater, right? right. It's going to be hired. <laughs> well, this summer it might not be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's true. Well, let me get some answers and then I'll get back. And I'd rather not wait till the next meeting. So right, I'll, right. I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. Uh, email. I'll email you and, and uh, give you a But I thought it was good. Uh, it was a good news that we didn't have to yeah. go through the permit, the expense of the permit, so we didn't bring it in, the well, job I, in. I, I guess last, thought so. we weren't going to make it this year. Right. Take in, uh, yeah. When you get the information, just email us, and we'll just hold another meeting to vote on it. Okay. Special. All right. And then we've got all our T's crossed and our I's dotted. Right. Okay. Do you want to say that? Um, yes. Um, we have had an incident recently, and we've had more than one incident, where the police have impounded vehicles, and they put them in the highway garage because they have to be secured. And it's a problem uh, having them in the way. And so we have batted around the idea. We have some supports that could be used, right, Tim? And we could build a carport with a chain area to put that we could have an inbound area. Do they have to be undercover? Um, they don't have to be no, covered. They have but, to be. But I mean, chain, we, um, we have. Sure. Yeah, we have. I didn't get over there today. But I will tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But there's got to be 16, 18, 20 foot, eight by eight pressure treated. So there's your expense. So I thought that if we put them in the ground, I mean, I could work with a contractor and dig the holes with the excavator and set them, and then just put a roof on it and and then have somebody put chain link fence in one bay of it so they they got a place that they can secure a car but all, yeah, on, top, also, on top of that it's going to put the police cruisers undercover so you get shoot all there back here yes but where they park out here yeah. and you don't guys don't know I've seen it a hundred times those four guys come in because of an emergency and they got 
15, 18 inches of snow on them. They're out there cleaning them off and trying to get them warmed up so they can go. I mean, they got to get them warmed up, but I mean, it, it, it would put them undercover. Yeah, that's, that's and make it so much easier for the police department. Yeah, the chief's been asking for that for a while. Yeah. And it's my solar panel carpool that I wanted to build. Uh -huh. <laughs> like Are you going to plug the cars into it? Yeah. it work? I mean, I built a lean to at home. It's 36 by 45, and that's what I used. Is that what and, this will be? About? Um, I, did, I haven't measured it out there yet, but I know I have enough 8 by 8s over there. And what happened was, is back when they replaced that bridge up to John Maloney's, I won't mention any names, but the town administrator that was here over double ordered everything. And then he didn't want nobody to know about it, so he didn't get them back to East Montpelier Home Center in time, and they wouldn't re wouldn't take them back. So, so they they've been stacked up that years <laughs> since I was I, before I came here. Are they still in good shape? Oh yeah, they're they're up on. Okay. They're up. They're all stacked with with uh, stickers, stickers, and everything. So, so they've been hanging sense. around over there for what? Well, I've been here almost seven years, so. Okay. Well, half of them are still left, at least. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, there's, there's, there's quite a few. Of them. Well, could we get a price? Um, we, you and I could work on getting a price of what it would cost. To yeah, I mean, together. if we could have just a, a you know, it's not going to take no. I mean, I think everyone agrees it's a great idea. All you're going to need is a carpenter. Well, why doesn't the town buy all the material and just hire a carpenter by the hour? It'll be less than $5,000. Yeah, because yeah, right. you already got, you got the, the, the bottom <laughs> of the money. It's right here. And it's all been paid for right. a long time ago. Yeah. So. Or not. Breaking our bid policy. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, all it's going to take is two by sixes and stuff to, to make, well, make a roof and put tin on it. And then, you know, then someday, if they got some money or somebody budgets some money, you could close it in completely. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, just to get them undercover, I feel sorry for those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, ice storms and stuff, they're over there trying to scrape ice off the windshields. And yeah. Bill feels about me hitting his budget. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... It's not, it's, it's not, it's not going to yeah. buy rough lumber to do the roof yeah. and put good tin on it and something that's going to last. And it's not going to cost the town much money. Right. It's going to be rather cheap for what you're going to get from it. Yeah. And then, and I mean, I don't want, I, I talked with Bill the other day because um, we had a drug car in over there and it, we had to put the, the pickup outdoors and had to clean everything out of it because we have chainsaws and everything else. We can't leave that outside, so I'm going to steal it for sure. And this last one was that accident on Route 12 down there that they had to impound the car because they felt it was done intentionally. And it sat over there in the garage almost two weeks. They took it today. And we got a huge, I had to make a dam to keep the oil from going into our floor drains. And it's not exactly impounded when you have the highway crew and yeah. you in and out of the garage. Right. Yeah, the garage has been locked up in the daytime, it's locked up at night. I mean, it's, it's just kind of a pain in the butt. You know, in, the, in the winter time, we had quite a few drug cars last winter. And Mark is the only one that can move anything. He can move a dump truck and he can move the loader. So if he's not around, they just cram it in there and we come in in the morning, we can't get out. So. Well, we'll go yeah, forward. Yeah, that's exactly. yeah. So, and that's the end of what I have to tell you tonight. Okay, uh, round table. Pete, I'm all set. Wait. Now that we're talking about chain link fence, I'm going to come over and, and grab you guys and you and Dana and go over there. I want to build a fence from my hotel over to my berm. I'm not saying that your garage is ugly. He says your garage ugly. is ugly. <laughs> and I just go and buy it and tear it down. <laughs> it <was> nice. <laughs> build a I, nice one. I want to build like a seven foot fence with the fabric woven in it. Oh. All the way across there and put a gate in where we put that temporary road in for mm -hmm. the police in case you ever need to use that again. Yeah, because that's what that gate was there, but right. 
Uh, but I'd like to call the fence yeah, to cover up your sand pile. Any names, but they plowed it all over with a loader plowing snow. Yeah. So. I don't have a problem with it at all. Right. Um, I'd like to determine where, what, if we all went over there together. And well, figure out uh, we know where we know where your boundary is because there's a cement marker there. Right, and where the gate should be in case you ever wanted to use it. Yeah. Gary, Gary told me they did that for the sewer department, so that if they had trouble with the with the manholes over here, that they would be able to get in on a weekend. I'm just I'm wanting to get that up before foliage. That's all. And Daniels is supposed to be here. Um, he hoped to be here by the end of this week. I'll call him tomorrow and find out, and then they're, they're going to fix that ugly mess on the front of that salt shed so that'll look a little better but now that we know dan has got some more money maybe we could build a brick town garage yeah <laughs> well that might be a little more of a struggle <laughs> <laughs> well that's all i got i just wanted to get together with you and mm -hmm. decide what it was well, time. just give me a little yeah. uh saw the work you did on rolla hill thank that you that look, looks good um i i haven't heard i haven't heard any feedback yet i haven't, haven't um, talked to anybody i'm not anybody. quite done down there um Nobody's making um, big ditch and stone, and I don't want to put the ditch and stone that we have because it's not big enough, and the, with the amount of water that's going down through there, it's just going to tumble it all down over the bank. Um, I talked with um, Northeast, of course, they have our gravel bid, so we get all of our material at the same price as what the gravel, gravel bid is. Hmm. And they are going to be up and running here shortly because they got their permits to open back up up there. So they haven't been able to make it because they didn't have a crusher big enough to make it. But I talked with Eric last week and he said that, he said within a couple, three weeks, he said we should be up and running up there with a big crusher. So, so once you get the bigger stone. Yeah, because what I want to do is, is, is I made that ditch from the cemetery to go down and dump over the bank in exactly the same place that the culvert that goes underneath the road there mm -hmm. so it's not before we had two different places water was going over that bank and that's what caused it all mm -hmm. and then i want to put some big rock down over there where the culvert dumps and stuff mm -hmm. so that it's going to hold that and not wash wash out anymore sure and we were very lucky uh, we hauled rock from here, and I had rock that was so big I couldn't move with the excavator. I had to drag it, and I just kept working it down over there and trying to place it. <laughs> and then the state came to me, and they were doing ditching and taking berms off Route 12 from Riverton to hmm. Montpelier, and they took off some awesome topsoil. So we kind of kept that aside. Well, I was done with the stonework and everything, and then I put the topsoil over the top of everything, and we've seeded and mulched it, and the grass is growing nice already. Yeah, it's so, really. And what's his name, the farmer? Nate. Nate Rogers said we did an awesome job. He was very, very happy good, with what good. happened. I'm glad he was happy about that. Yeah. So. And, I, and I'm glad you were able to easily get in there and get access, and it wasn't. Well, I just just had those guys keep dumping, and then yeah. I just made myself a road and just got down over there with the excavator and and just brought everything back right. up, shelved it all all the way up through, and yeah, no, it, 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 that's it. that's not going nowhere as now. Yeah, thank you. you okay? And executive session? Yes, please. Under personnel.